one of the most important attributes of origami is once we have studied and understood the way paper folds and unfolds, we can apply those patterns to things that are very different from paper. I hope by bringing the tools of mathematics into my origami design that I can then fold something that's beautiful and that's unexpected. My name is Robert Lang and I'm a physicist and an origami artist. Origami is the Japanese name for the art of folded paper and most origami is folded from a single sheet of paper with no cuts or tears. I have loved origami my entire life. I've pursued it ever since I was a kid. But my study was science and engineering. I worked for NASA doing research on lasers. But throughout that whole time, I had been pursuing origami, developing designs, and writing books. So in 2001, I quit my job to try to make a career out of origami. I've worked on a couple of different folding patterns that were round and would wrap into a cylindrical geometry to fit into a rocket. And I developed an airbag in a car that inflates from a small folded bundle. So whenever an engineer creates something that opens and closes in a controlled way, they can make use of the folding patterns of origami. Over the years, math has allowed me to realize as an artist shapes and creations that I couldn't achieve any other way. Traditional origami was relatively simple. The designs would have taken maybe 20 or 30 steps at most. But today, origami pieces can be so complicated that they can have tens, hundreds, maybe even a thousand steps. When I'm folding, it's like working with an old friend. It's like dancing with a partner whose moves I know. Uh, if I move this way, I know my partner is going to move that way. And so I explore the math, develop the equations, solve the equations, create the folding pattern, and then I find out what it looks like. And as often as not, it is beautiful. For me, the driving force is that there's always something new to try, a new problem, a new subject, a new shape, that I didn't think I was able to create before, but now I think I know how to realize it. And each time I solve a problem, you get this wonderful feeling, and you want more of those feelings. When you're watching a television show or a movie and you see an actor holding a magazine or a book or a letter, a lot of what you're seeing on the screen was custom made by people like me. Let me see their paperwork. If I've done my job right in creating that piece of paper, the possibilities are literally endless. I mean, one single piece of paper can communicate a huge amount in telling the audience about the character or about the scene. It's figuring out how this thing can best do its job of being a part of the story. My name is Ross McDonald and I create paper props for movies and television. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with comics, was obsessed with paper and illustration, and really loved that world that I was reading or seeing on paper. I've done a little bit of everything. For years, I worked as a magazine and newspaper illustrator, book illustrator. That eventually led me into making props. For the last 25 years, I've made tens of thousands of paper props for close to 50 television shows and movies. My first major motion picture was Baby's Day Out, and I was hired basically as an illustrator to illustrate a faux 1930s children's book. Take the book. I've done literally tens of thousands of props for all five seasons of Boardwalk Empire. I did the Pawnee Charter for an episode of Parks and Recreation. For Joy, I did 
all of the patents for the mops that we for see. For Hateful Eight, I, I did, did the Red Apple, National Treasure, Tobacco, the Book of Tins, Secrets, the Nick, the I Book of Secrets, I Silver Lining Corpse, Corpse Playbook, and I, for and the, the Wizard of Lies, I did the Book of Eli, Barnes, I did the Book of Assassination, I've designed everything from passports and maps and travel documents, wanted posters, government forms, FBI reports, psychiatric files, agent identification folders, anything that's made of paper I've made at one time or another. Part of what you need to figure out when you're making a paper prop is the backstory of the piece of paper. You don't just take a new book and slosh brown ink on it to make it look old. You gotta figure out how it got worn, how it got dirty. The scene might involve an actor reading three lines out of a letter, but you have to figure out how old is it? What kind of paper is it made out of? How was the paper made? Should it be made with carbon paper? Should it be on onion skin? Is some guy gonna pull out a rumpled piece of paper from his pocket or is he gonna pull it out of a file folder? What color paper should it be? Should it be yellow? Should it be white? Should it be ivory colored? Who's signing it? What does their handwriting look like? What kind of ink are they using when they write it? What kind of pen are they using? And then, because no letter is ever three lines, you have to write the rest of the copy in the letter. Depending on what I'm making, a project can take, you know, a, a day, an hour, uh, weeks, months. Every page is filled out, every book has text on it and pictures. Every paper in the file folder is, is a real document that's all filled out and created. For example, for the Book of Secrets, they said, just come up with secrets. So I said, okay, well, let's do Roswell, let's do the Kennedy assassination, let's do all these crazy conspiracy theory things. Then there was the research into those specific things. So you have to find all that, figure out how to recreate it convincingly. It was a huge undertaking. It took about four months to really build that prop. And it's just communicated in a split second in the scene. Let's see here, what do we got here? Have you seen the evening paper? I have here pieces of paper. There's so many amazing things that start off with a piece of paper. And the props that I'm making are all part of that. Sometimes when I go to the theater, I'm, I'm so excited I'm almost shaking. And it's not because I want to see the driver's license I made for one of the actors. It's because I, I did a tiny bit of work on that movie and it, that's very exciting to me. In the end, you've produced this thing which, you know, you've done your best job of nailing, getting absolutely right. And, you know, sometimes I'm just like, wow. When you see something like that in the what final the product the and realize that this thing you worked on uh, is this huge moment in the story, that can be just really, really a great feeling. The paper airplane you folded in middle school, horrible design. But I've thrown a paper airplane 214 feet. I'm John Collins, I am the paper airplane guy, world record holder for paper aircraft distance. So the year we got the record was 2012. It was, uh, you know, one of the great days in my life, actually. You know, I, I look back at my child being born and the world record. Those are great moments for me. I named the world record plane after my wife. The name of the design is Suzanne. So this is how you fold Suzanne. You start with the short side of the paper up, the top you of the take, page and put it against the right side. So now side, when you unfold that, you've got an X in the After that is to take the right hand straight down from the top of the plane. You fold the plane in half. It's just eight simple folds. There are a lot of different kinds of folding techniques and a lot of different kinds of paper airplanes. There's planes that boomerang back. There are planes that are made to fly straight very far. There are planes that are made to stay in the air for a long time. Every great paper airplane, distance or time aloft, has very accurate folding. Most people want to know how I got into paper airplanes, and the reality is I never got out of them. I am curious by nature. I love math and science. The cool thing about paper airplanes is it's a way to actually discover something real about flight. What most people don't know is that we don't know the exact cause and effect for lift. Every little paper airplane throw is like a little science experiment. 
here's the laboratory right here in your hand that you could use to do real science. Teachers kind of don't like kids to do paper airplanes. It has this bad boy kind of renegade reputation. If they could discover that paper airplanes actually are science, that they're doing science and having fun doing it, I think that's an incredible breakthrough. Paper airplane throwing class, yes. <laughs>